Hello and welcome to COVID Conversations here on WNCU 90.7 FM, streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm your host, Kimberly Pierce Cartwright. I'm the News and Public Affairs Director at WNCU. And we're using the Zoom platform to talk about how COVID-19 is affecting our world. Fingers were crossed and plans were made to fight through COVID-19 to keep North Carolina Central University faculty, staff, and students safe through the pandemic. And one of the people on the front lines in that effort is Dr. Kristen Longwitter. She is the Director of Environmental Health and Safety at North Carolina Central University. Hello and welcome back to COVID Conversations, Dr. Longwitter. Thank you so much, Kimberly. It's great to be here again and, and um, have a chance to talk to everybody. Yep, and this is this is your second time with me. So when we first met, you were developing strategy and um, getting components in place to deal with COVID-19. Tell me, how is NCCU faring through this semester with classes and the need to protect students, faculty, and staff against the virus? So we're actually doing very, very well. Um, our, our case counts are very low. We've had um, minimal students in, in uh, teen and isolation this semester um, compared to previous semesters. So um, you know, on the whole, everything is looking great. We have a high um, uh, faculty staff vaccination right here on campus. We're about 92%. Um, which is, and those are verified um, vaccinations. So that's excellent. Um, you know, with, with our student population, we're a little lower, but we're, we're about 46% right now, which, um, you know, is exciting. So we're doing all the things that we need to be doing. You know, we've continued to wear masks um, indoors. So wearing masks in classes and the residence halls. Um, and I really think that our surveillance testing um, has been a huge part of that. So for anyone who's unvaccinated um, for the, throughout the semester, and that includes faculty, staff, and students, if you are unvaccinated, you're being tested weekly for surveillance. So I think that's played a huge part in being able to keep our numbers low. Very good. So um, how high is prevention now as compared to the height of COVID concerns when the, the pandemic first started? Have you been able to take off out, out barriers? What are some of the things that have happened? So one of the things that we really looked at when we started this fall semester versus the fall of 2020 semester was really how to get students back into the classroom, because we know that's critical. Um, you know, regardless of your age, it's very important that you be able, you have the opportunity at least to learn in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, and, you know, students want to come to campus, they want to be here, they want to be with their friends, they want to be learning and socializing. And so it was really important to us. So we went through and did a really careful risk assessment and said, okay, what do we have to keep and what do we have to take out? And of course, while we were doing this, we were hit with the Delta variant, um, which I think kind of threw everybody for a loop, right? Like you said, fingers crossed, we were hoping that we wouldn't be talking about this this time this year, but here we are. Um, so we, we are not, um, we don't have distancing um, in our classrooms. Um, or you know, meetings, places like that. We do ask that if it's, a, if it's possible to spread out all that you can, you know, just um, stay away from everybody, basically. Um, we hold a lot of events outdoors that would normally be held indoors. And again, just with our really robust testing, um, you know, where everyone's either vaccinated or getting tested once a week, we were able to lift kind of some of those, um, you know, distancing and things like that. Um, but the masks, the testing, and the vaccination have been huge, um, and we're really relying on those as our primary um, means of control at this point. So what? tell me what happens when you find out that a student tests positive for COVID. What's the next step? Sure. So we have... Um, goes by many names and we've evolved multiple times, but um, we have a, a fantastic uh, student COVID management group that's been assembled here on campus. And that is their primary focus for this group. So we have members that focus on testing, tracing, um, and vaccination. And they, um, as soon as we know that we have a student who is positive, 
Um, we are we work with our vendor Apex Solutions, who's been with us on campus. They've been um, embedded with us since the beginning, and they do all of our testing. So we work with them to immediately get that student into quarantine and isolation, um, you know, get all of their needs met, get them set up, um, notify their professors that they are, um, you know, that they will be out of class for this time, and to make a, uh, help them make arrangements to continue to learn. Um, and then we, we get them moved. We, we get them physically moved into the quarantine and isolation space and then manage that there. So they get you know, daily health checks, uh, mental health checks. They can make requests for you know, food, special foods and things like that. Um, and then really it's just, it's just you know, holding out the quarantine period and, and trying to keep everybody safe. Um, and, and then they're released to go back out. So, and it's worked very well. So are you able to release the number of students who have contracted COVID this semester? So like I said, our numbers have actually stayed pretty low. Um, we had an initial bump right at the beginning of the semester because again, we were really just starting to get into that, that heavy Delta period where um, you know, we were hit with this really transmissible um, pathogenic variant. And so we did see a lot of cases early on in the semester. Um, and, you know, we kept a really basic protocol. So all students are quarantined, or I'm sorry, isolated for um, 14 days. If they're quarantined, they're quarantined for 14 days. And so it's just as they roll out, um, part of our COVID management team is, is specifically dedicated to quarantine and isolation. So as the students end that, that period, then they roll back out. And then they're um, actually exempt from testing for 90 days based on CDC recommendations that they could test positive during that time. So um, we manage all that on the back end as we release them. Mm -hmm. So how is um, NCCU faring as compared to other UNC schools in the system? Um, so, you know, we've, again, we've kept our numbers very low and, and I attribute that largely to um, the student COVID team here because we've done some things that other schools have not done, other schools in the systems have not done. So um, for some schools, you all you have to do to say you're vaccinated is to self-attest and say, you know, just say you are. Here we have, um, between myself and the COVID team, we've laid eyes on every proof of vaccination and verified it. Um, our testing is, is done by, it's not self-testing. We don't accept self-testing. So they have to go to the clinic and a medical professional tests them and then reports that out. So I think um, with all of that taken together, we've done very well compared to the other schools because they've had to, you know, largely based on size and resources, have had to um, not, not put as many, um, I guess, governors on, on the information that they're collecting. So um, tell me then, what, it, what has every day been like working through the virus? And I really, I'm specifically interested in what is on your checklist and a baseline to get stuff done every day. So um, we, it's been kind of nice because we finally, um, as much as I hate to say, it, gotten into a routine. So every morning uh, we meet as the COVID management team. We have an 8.30 debrief every morning where we talk just about anything that's going on. Uh, we talk about our testing. We talk about vaccine clinics um, and, and just anything we And that's gone on. You know, we've done that every day for the last 18 months. Um, the other thing that we've started now is a, is a COVID self-report self line. So if people are having signs and symptoms or if they've tested positive off campus, they can report through that. So the first thing I do every morning after my 8.30 is to go through those and say, okay, you know, yes, you need to be quarantined. Uh, let us know what your test results are, you know, just responding back to them in some way so that they have some idea of how to handle that. Um, and then we, we do have a COVID question line, which I can tell you is very busy. <laughs> it rings all the time. So, you know, it's just answering phone calls and trying to get people information um, is, is the largest chunk of the day. And, and I will say that even still at this point, the largest chunk of my day is, is solely dedicated to COVID still. Um, so so with, the, with the COVID line, does that mean that people are actually calling in and there's somebody on the other end of the line who is answering specific questions about COVID? Answering questions, um, 
specifically about COVID, but more specifically about our um, processes here and what that looks like. Or, you know, if you think you might not be feeling well, or really they can call with anything. And it's, um, they call and it's, you hit two if you're faculty and staff, you hit three if you're a student and it gets you directed to the correct person. But you no, know, we have a, a live person on the other end of that phone answering it. So what, what's been the biggest challenge in all of this? And has it been like um, wrangling cats to get people vaccinated? Um, you know, it's been, it's been a challenge. Uh, and I think that that's, you know, not specific to, to here. I think just in general in our society, um, I think that we, this idea of public health and public health protection and vaccination of, you know, what we basically are now are calling a vaccine preventable disease got really tied up in politics and, um, and, you know, this, this social media, this, you know, all the conspiracies and the government. And, and I think it just really um, did a disservice to everything. And so I would say my biggest challenge has been just trying to combat some of that and trying to remind people, you know, this isn't a political issue. This is, this is a matter of, we have this vaccine. We want to keep you from getting a vaccine preventable disease. And this is how you do it. Um, you know, while at the same time still being um, empathetic to this, uh, you know, this idea that there have been some, you know, things that the government have done, and, and there is a reason for some of this happening, uh, but just really trying to remind people that this is a public health issue and to um, learn your facts, but make sure that your facts are coming from a, a reputable source. Um, so I spend a lot of time you know, during every day, probably advocating for that. Just do your homework. Um, I can provide you with something to read that's a peer review, you know, journal article, um, but just that all the information out there may not be accurate. And so, you know, empower yourself and, and um, take care of yourself and your family by learning everything that you can. I wanna talk now about um, booster shots. And um, NCCU was a, a location for people to come and get shots. First of all, is that still going on? Are, are people able to, to walk in for that or do they have to make an appointment? Is that still going on? So, um, and probably I spoke about this last time we spoke because I always speak about it because I'm so proud um, that we have this here. But NCC very early on stood up a, a completely NCCU run vaccine clinic that was not only for our campus, but for the community as well. Um, we stood that up back in March of, of this year, um, and we've had vaccine clinics every week since um, we, we stood that up. And tomorrow is our first pediatric clinic with the release of the um, uh, Pfizer being with the authorization that Pfizer can now be used in five to 11 year olds. So we're actually standing up a, a pediatric clinic specifically for um, those patients, knowing that, you know, it's a little different. So every Wednesday, we still have a vaccine clinic here on campus. It's held in the old student union. Um, and yeah, anyone can come in. Um, like I said, we're, we're trying to keep peds coming in um, between three and seven at night on Wednesdays because it's just, it's a different population. And, you know, we have toys and we have treats and we have all that stuff that we want to have out for them. Um, we also have a pediatric specialist on staff between those hours, just in case anyone has any concerns or there's any issues. So, um, but for booster shots, you can walk in any Wednesday. There is usually a sign up, um, and and we do try to to get that out to faculty and staff um, each week. But always feel free to walk in. The current process is that all you have to do is self-attest that you meet the requirements for vaccination or for, I'm sorry, for a booster, um, and you'll get one. And we do have, um, and as you know, it's now been authorized by the FDA that you're allowed to mix and match. So if you got a J&J &J and now you want to get a Moderna or a Pfizer, we are allowed to do that now. Um, so do you have, do you have all three? Do you have J&J? &J? So we only have the two. We only have Pfizer and Moderna. Um, they have really reallocated J&J &J based on the way it's stored and the fact that it's one shot. They've reallocated it to um, some harder to reach populations, but we do have the Moderna and the Pfizer. 
Okay. So what are you um, telling people as they go into the holidays, your advice and your message as people move through traveling and move through um, celebrations and sitting around the table and enjoying family and friends? So I recommend that, you know, and again, I don't want to be saying this this year because it's the same thing I said last year, but yes. safe. Um, you know, we know all the things we can do. Test before you go. Test when you come back. Tests are widely available for our faculty, staff, and students. Um, you know, we have it available here on campus. Um, if you travel, you know, be safe. Stay away from people. Wear your face mask. Um, wash your hands a lot. And just, you know, again, the best thing you can do is be vaccinated, be fully vaccinated. Um, but even then, you know, you need to follow your precautions. Um, but the best thing I can say is test before you go and test when you get back, just to make sure that, you know, you, you haven't in, come across anything while you're out. You know, we all get, our immune systems all get run down when we travel, we get tired, the holidays are stressful, and that's a really good chance for this virus to sneak in there. So, um, you know, take care of yourself, um, but, you know, just be smart about it. Do all the things we know we've been doing for a year and yes. a half now. So um, give me information again about the booster shot. What are, what are the hours for people who are not pediatric to come in and get one? So um, our non-pediatric clinics right now, um, we've had to shorten them a little bit to get the PEDS clinic in. So they are from 10 to two on Wednesdays. And they're in the, um, the Afonso Student Union, just in that main um, area on the first floor. Okay. Sounds and, really and you can just walk in. Sounds really good. Um, how are you doing through all this? Good. Um, like I said, <laughs> it's been uh, an experience that um, I think none of us will ever forget. But starting a new position and, and coming into NCCU when I did was... Um, it was trial by fire. <laughs> uh, you know, I've met people here who are just doing such a fantastic job and working so hard, and it's been great to be part of that team. Very good. Dr. Kristen Longwear, our guest today, the Director of Environmental Health and Safety at North Carolina Central University. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. And you are welcome. Thank you, audience, for watching via YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as listening on WNCU 90.7 FM. Be sure to like us. We want you to follow us. We want you to subscribe to our pages to see more of our archive shows. I'm Kimberly Pierce Cartwright, your host for COVID Conversations.